Okay, well today we have something interesting for you. Uh, if you're like me, hopefully not, but we're trapped here in the Northeast with freezing temps still and record snowfall, single digits in the morning. And this is something that we can do as a project to get ready for the coming spring. And it's also by Flowhive, but this is a method that they've uh, developed for recycling some of their old wood and cast offs from the Flowhive components themselves. And this is a pollinator house. Flowhive Pollinator Hotel, as it says here on the side of the box. And what this is for is not your honeybees. This is for orchard bees and mason bees. And it comes with its own wrench. Everything is self-contained here. Little driver, self-tapping screws, and they're all protected from the weather. It comes with a nice little instruction kit here. And this is very simple and very basic but I'll go over the components and I'm gonna put one of them together for you already. If you've seen some of my earlier dealing with bees in winter videos, you've seen these also out on fence posts in my field. And these things are pretty darn expensive. I don't mind saying that and I'll explain why in a moment. So we start with the bottom of it, put up the side. You can see I've already got the screws here on the right there. And you can keep them a little loose just to make sure everything fits up snug before you screw them in tight. I'm also going to seal up all the joints here with Gorilla Wood Glue. This is for indoor-outdoor use. It's You can clean it up with water, and the best part is it's going to dry clear and it's not going to affect uh, the appearance of the wood. So Gorilla Glue. Anyway, I'll put a link to all of the things I'm showing here down um, in the description. I got the Gorilla Glue at Home Depot. It's pretty widely available. Anyway, what I'm doing is just putting the parts together, and we're going to press it up. And this Gorilla Glue is fantastic stuff. Just smear it around with your fingers and then you can rinse your hands off later. Again, the cleanup is really easy. Don't worry about being tidy because it's going to dry clear and it's going to look like nothing is there at all. So here we go. And again, now the roof parts come with screws, but if you center up the roof with the screws, you're going to have to have it not push forward. I wanted to push this forward a little bit, so I just sealed it all up with Gorilla Glue. I'm going to let this sit overnight. And then we're going to take it outside and mount it up uh, tomorrow. So this is it. It's all put together. Couldn't be more basic. And these are the key inserts here that we're going to use. These reeds also come with it. And they're from Australia. And this is what your mason and orchard bees are going to be uh, laying their eggs inside of. So you can use lots of different things to create these uh, orchard bee houses, these mason bee houses. And uh, I even have uh, cross sections of trees that are cut that are six inches thick. And I just drill very variable hole diameters in there. And this is a close up look at it that you can see that all these different species of tiny pollinator bees that are independent, they're not social bees like the uh, honeybees are. And here's a great reference guide and a guide to North American bees. If you're having troubles identifying them, bottom center there is the honeybee, of course. But every kind of bee is in this book, and it helps you identify them and what their traits are. Another really useful book that I want to recommend, Bees, Wasps, and Ants. This one actually goes into depth on these pollinator houses, just like the ones we're putting up here. Of course, not the flow houses, but other designs that you can use. And how these uh, pollinator bees, these independent bees that are solitary out in the environment and do all their pollination work, how and where they live. And this is very simple. Now, the reason I'm doing this in the wintertime is because we want to get them out there. As soon as the spring blossoms start coming is when those that are already out in the environment start to hatch out and they'll be looking for new homes. You want to make sure these are already out there and in place. Great activity for kids. Now look across the side here. They're all kind of different and unique and that helps these little solitary bees find their homes and they'll start laying eggs. Of course the females are the ones that are laying the eggs but you should see a lot of activity here in the coming months. And this only happens in springtime, so be ready. Also, congratulations on supporting habitat protection for pollinators. I don't disagree that these are expensive. I spent over $70 a piece for them, but 100% of the profit from your purchase of this flow pollinator house will be donated to carefully selected charities working to protect habitat for pollinators and other species. Woo, I got that out. So it's a donation. They're using 100% of their profits to benefit pollinators beyond the honeybee. So a couple of books to read while the weather's still bad. Here's how I've installed them outside, even though, again, it snowed this morning already. But these are in place under an overhang facing east so they get that morning sunshine and they'll warm up early, but they're not on the south side where midday they might get really too hot for these pollinators. 
So get a couple of these, put them out, make your own even, and you're probably going to be upset because a link that's going to connect you to these flow pollinator deals, um, they're out of stock right now. But thanks for watching anyway. I hope you look into some of these pollinators that live individually and uh, enjoy them in the coming spring. Thanks for watching.